Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joe Carbonera, and I'm the editor of Food Service Equipment and Supplies Magazine. As the economy starts to improve and customers start to re consumers start to regain their confidence, food service operators are starting to prepare themselves for better times ahead. What's interesting is that it seems as if there are no shortage of emerging trends for operators to consider during these times. To get a better handle on some of the more pressing, pressing trends that we're seeing in the industry today and the solutions that operators are choosing to apply, I have two seasoned food service professionals joining me here today. I have with me Gawain Guy of C&T Design out of Indianapolis, and I have consultant Georgie Shockey from Ruck Shockey Associates. Uh, Gawain, I guess the, the first question that, that, I would, that I would pose to you is, as business conditions slowly start to improve, what are some of the more pressing challenges your customers are facing? Well, first of all, I do agree with you. The, the, uh, we see a trend, a uh, positive trend in the economy. The, the restaurateurs are starting to uh, pursue their dreams and their, um, their objectives. The struggle, though, still exists in the financial um, requirement and, and securing the financing needed to bring the for project forward. So that's, that's a struggle. It's still a struggle for the, for the restaurateurs. So our job is just to obviously design their projects at the most economical package available for them. Absolutely. In Georgie, it seems that from healthcare legislation to new food safety laws, there's a lot of new ordinances that operators are getting hit with these days. What are two of the three biggest trends you're seeing affecting operators in that respect? Well, I think it's going to be the, the food chain all the way through is going to be resetting for all these public priorities. Um, I think we're going to have to reset on cost. I think we're going to have to get more diverse on our menus to make sure we meet some of the legislative codes that are coming down. And uh, that's going to be, I think, some of the biggest challenges, but resetting to what the public is really looking for. And it kind of requires a little bit of a different mindset, doesn't it? I mean, from the way you design to the way, you know, from the way you design to the, the way you design the menu to the way you're designing designing the space, I would think. Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's, you know, when we have to do more with less, I'll agree that we're yeah. resetting the economy, it's coming up a little bit more. But I think people are going to need to have priorities in place, you know, so that they choose the things wisely, not, not only a menu, but also the equipment, okay. all of it. it. It seems to me like the, it, it seems to me like the operators have gotten comfortable, that, or the, are we seeing a more efficient and a savvier operator emerging from this? Have we learned some things about, you know, Gwen, are you seeing that like, in, for example, in prototype design? Are we seeing some smaller, more efficient prototype designs? Well, let, me, let me go back and just say, I do agree with you from the standpoint, our customers are smarter. They're smarter just from the mere fact of the technology, the access to the technology to do, uh, complete their due diligence on the equipment, on the operation, how does it make sense for them? So when we approach those clients, they're at a whole different level when we engage that client and, go and start the design process. So yes, they're savvy. And uh, as a food service equipment dealer and designer, we have to be constantly on our toes to make sure we're always educated on what's the best equipment for the right operator, the right environment, and the right operation. In terms of the way the operators are managing their, their businesses, what are some of, the, some of the trends you're seeing? Obviously doing more with less, uh, are we getting to be more proactive? What, what are some of the different things that, some of the changes you've noticed is, over the last couple of years? Well, I think they're going to, they're really looking at reinvesting and kind of reinventing themselves to fit some of the public priorities. Um, we're going to have to re-engineer a menu that's uh, set lower in some of the nutritional standards. Mm -hmm. We've got to get sodium out of the menus now. There's just going to be a lot of re-engineering, and I think a lot of them are getting proactive in how they're going to re-engineer, but they also have to create products and serve products that people like. You know, we got to sell a product, we got to sell a piece of food. They're not going to be able to do that if they don't engineer the products right, if we don't have the right technology behind it. Right. So it's busy. Are we seeing an increased, I, I would think that we'd start seeing an increased emphasis on, um, on food prep. You know, and I think in, in the way they're doing it, because you know, for example, we all know that broccoli is is the miracle food, mm -hmm. right? Our moms mm -hmm. all told us to eat broccoli yeah. when we were growing up, and it has a lot of nutritional value. But the fact remains, if, if I uh, if I deep fry it, if I batter it and I deep fry it, I lose a lot of that nutritional value. So I'm thinking food prep is going to be critical for both of your segments moving forward. Yes. 
I would agree with that. And, and, and uh, we have a great example of uh, uh, actually a chain, and uh, the whole concept behind this chain is a healthy pizza. Now, it sounds really odd, pizza being healthy, but the, everything about the pizza is organic. Everything that goes in, except for the protein-related products, it's, uh, it's uh, organic-based uh, uh, ingredients in the making that pizza. So it's a concept. The concept is live. It's working. And uh, we hope to grow well. I mean, we hope to put in many stores for this client. But it's funny, the concept of healthy pizza, you say that sounds odd, to me that sounds like heaven. <laughs> I'd like to live in a land where the pizza is considered healthy. And if you can get the beer to go with it to be yeah. healthy, well, all will be well with the world. Yeah. Absolutely. Georgie, are you seeing more emphasis in food prep? Uh, I definitely think so, especially with the fresh mm -hmm. components. I think we're going to get back to more of that farm-to-table concept. We kind of put it on hold, I think, with the recession because people couldn't afford it. But I think they're going to go back and start sourcing some of those um, pieces that they couldn't source before because of the cost points. But definitely yeah. prep and fresh. And it, I, I agree wholeheartedly with what she's saying because uh, on the projects we're associated with, especially in higher education, uh, it's rare. It's an exception today to find a slicer, yep. a buffalo chopper, yeah. a mixer. Those things are not existent in, in, uh, in food service operations. And that tells you where we, uh, where we are today in, uh, in food prep. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I think the, the other trend that we're starting to see is that operators that we're seeing extended use on operations now. You know, you talk about schools, for example, there's a big push in school food service, um, particularly in Illinois where I'm from, where they're talking about some of the, particularly the underdeveloped, the areas where there's some, some poorer people where they're, in addition to feeding the kids breakfast and lunch, now they're given a hearty snack at the end of the day to help with, Take home. you know, to get them to study, to help with performance and that sort of thing. Colleges, I'm noticing in more of the facility designs that are coming through, more late night dining in colleges than there ever were. When we went to school, everything closed up. You know, if you didn't eat dinner by six, You're everything done. was, it was, it was all done. Are you seeing longer use, longer multiple use for facilities now? I think that we're having to multitask the facility to different day parts. We could also be using it to multitask to different functions. You know, they're going to be doing catering to the regular service, right. you know, so I think facilities are getting used a lot more. They don't shut down at six o'clock and the public is demanding almost on demand feeding. And you, you uh, and a, re a good example of that in terms of uh, the kitchen hours are taken and being extended and so forth. If you go to a fairly new sorority or fraternity, in most in most ca uh, college campuses, they knew they now have what they call a night kitchen, where after hours there is a section that you have that the kids can walk into, and have a sandwich or a hot cereal or whatever the case may be. Um, there's a section now designated for that behavior yep. after dinner and so forth. That's a, it's, a, it's impressive, you know, to, to, yep. just to see the, the diversity and all the different things I think that, that are happening within, you know, with those, uh, with, those, with those operations. It's nothing like I ever imagined, you know, back in the, back in the day, I think that's for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about sustainability a lot, and it seems to me that, uh, you know, the, the produce gets all the, all the play on sustainability. But isn't there, isn't, there's an ENS angle, you know, and a design angle to sustainability, isn't there? That's a good question. Uh, sustainability, it, it, it can be used in so many different platforms in the kitchen. Uh, I think you have to be careful uh, in how you portray that to the client. And when you use the word sustainability, and at least in my world, <clears throat> we have to be able to justify, quantify, and make sure you can audit your, at least your, mentality going into the project. If you have to be accountable, we have to be yep. accountable. So you have to be very careful on how you use that word on our end when it, when it comes to the equipment. I'm not sure on your end on the food, how that applies to you. Well, food, as you said, I mean, there is a sustainable amount of product that you can bring in, sourcing it close to home. You know, that's a big, sure. big piece of it. Um, how, do we, how do we bring it to mm -hmm. the table that is in the most gentlest way so we don't interrupt what that sustainability chain is supposed to be. But, and I would agree on the design side, mm -hmm. you know, sustainability sometimes gets lumped into uh, the green energy yeah. and, and things like that. So what, what do we mean by sustainable? Yeah, I think that's the first thing you have to understand what you mean by sustainable and you're, you're on an ENS side, I think what people need to realize is that you can do that in, in three basic ways. You know, 
and the three basic ways, you know, energy reduction, water, you know, and in uh, working with waste. Yeah. Right. You know, I think those are those are three things in waste and all, you know, waste all that it encompasses is just just amazing, I think, and I think I think people always just think a bit about what's going out in the back door, but mm -hmm. it's food waste from preparation mm -hmm. perspective. Right. It's uh, processing, dealing with plate waste or going trailers. I mean, that it's yep. a simple thing, I think, but that makes things that makes things really more sustainable. And Georgie, we were talking not that long ago about um, about the concept of return. Mm -hmm. uh, you had talked about you know being quantifiable just now, going and that kind of that kind of triggered me in the back of my mind, because when you talk about return. Mm -hmm. You know, that was always something that, you know, calculating ROI was always a nice to have, but it wasn't something that was always a have to have. It seems to be that the, the mindset, particularly among non-commercial operators, is, is very different in that regard now. They're embracing it. Yeah, very much so. They've got to do a business case analysis of what they're proposing to change in their design, their mm -hmm. operation, what resources is it going to take not only to put it in once, but what am I going to take day after day, year after year to operate a new system. Right. So the business case has to be made and, and some very complex financial models are starting to run in the non-commercial world. And it seems, you know, here in this backdrop at the NAFM show here in Orlando, uh, you know, this is obviously technology heaven, right? Where the, yeah, right. the latest yeah. and greatest products are on display. That's why we're they, here, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have yeah. The, uh, the what's hot, what's cool set up over there and you know, the, the whole bit. I guess the, the question, you know, Wayne, is that if, if a customer came to you and they were looking at, they said, you know, now it's time we've neglected our infrastructure and we need to up invest in technology a little bit, what kind of guidance would you give them? Well, there are several things uh, when it comes to uh, answering your question. First, the first thing, obviously, and the most obvious thing uh, most customers look at is uh, what we call your payback. And how do you calculate payback? And uh, initial thought process, well, payback, well, I have this equipment that uses so many KW and this equipment that uses so much KW. And it's just black and white in their minds, but, but think about it. When equipment is sitting here, let's say this fryer that's electric and it's not being used, there's energy being consumed. There's idle rate energy consumption you have to think about. So there's many, many factors. Uh, but obviously, what's the payback? And is that payback uh, warrant that investment? Yeah. Uh, second thing, I would, I would uh, ask my customers to think about does it make sense for their operation? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to, to invest in the technology, but how would that help their menu offerings? Sure. How will that separate them from their competition in that block or in that strip center? And, most, and, and, and uh, another question, can their employees use that technology to the, for the best yeah. use of their facility? Hey, you make a great point, because you're, the technology that you bring in your facility is only as good as the people's ability to execute it. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the, the really key things that, that has been driven home to me in recent weeks, talking with people. You can put the greatest thing in the world Correct. You know, in front of them, but if they don't know how to use it or how to execute. I think the other thing right. that people need to remember is that you have to look at your operations holistically, don't you, Georgie? I mean, it's not just the cooking equipment or right. just the washing equipment or prep. We need to know how they all work with each other. Well, and they, they, it's almost like a symphony within the kitchen. Um, and if all the pieces are working right, and what we say about technology is we want the technology to work for us, not us work right. to make the technology yeah. happen. So if everything is working as it should be, the kitchen should be running really smooth. I should be able to drop some labor out of the kitchen. I should be able to have a maybe a smaller footprint to design mm -hmm. under, which is a big piece of ROI. Yeah. So those are a couple of things. Now, as the climate is improving, Georgie, what, what are, if, if somebody said, you know, we're trying to make an investment and get ready for better times, what, what are one or two pieces of advice you'd give an operator? Um, what we're telling operators right now is what can you do to really come up with a good outcome? So if your outcome is uh, financial based, we're going to design something that is going to perform to that outcome. If it's customer service, what are we going to have to put in place that is going to drive a higher outcome or better customer service? So we really want to work from the back to the front and make sure that we understand what their key objectives are and then we'll help them put into place what are two or three of the things that they need to think about. Equipment, you know, people, those are the two biggest pieces of investment and they've got to go hand in hand because if you don't have the good people, all this technology and all this equipment doesn't really make it happen. So you're in essence creating the culture yes. that exists in the kitchen. Uh, very much so. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's interesting because I think that that's one of the things that's probably gotten lost in the last couple of years is culture. Yeah. You know, as, as business leaders, I don't care if you're a dealer, if you're a consultant, or even operators for that matter, yeah. you know, as business has gone on, you, you know, and things get tough, you feel this sense of panic and obligation to the people you work with and you work for, and mm -hmm. you start working in your business instead of working at your business and running your business, right? So maybe one of the things that they should be thinking about moving forward is, is kind of broadening your perspective and going, looking back at the mission and the vision of who you are and what you want to be when you grow up, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, especially here in the U.S., I mean, we are becoming a much more diverse population and all those customers out there are becoming more diverse and are we able to mirror what our customers are really wanting? Yeah, I, and I think that's the great opportunity. I think the great opportunity now is that you're able to do so much more. Yes. Um, and that the, cust the, the there's a demand from the customer to make you do more, but I think you're able to do so much more. And I think it's uh, and I think to me that's exciting, seeing seeing that because the versatility that you're seeing, you're seeing more authentic pieces of food service equipment, yes. you know, yep. going in the front of the house a little bit to kind of make a bit of the statement. Um, it's inter it's interesting. It's an exciting time, I think, you know, as as we're getting ready to to move forward here. Definitely. Tell me. Well, with that, I'd like to say thank you to Gwen and to Georgie uh, for you, spending Joe. time with us here this afternoon at the NAFM show, and uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes with a couple more interviews. Thank you. Thank you.